Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is Brian Morrison, and today we're gonna to take a look at how you can read data from a Notion database using JavaScript. Let's get started. All right, so before we get started, you're gonna to have to have at least a little bit of understanding of JavaScript to follow along, at least enough to, to write out what I'm showing you. You're also gonna to have to have a Notion integration created already and uh, have access granted to a specific database within your workspace. Uh, I just released a video on exactly how to do that, so check one of the corners for that. But yeah, let's just hop right into it though. Okay, so what I have here is just a, a blank uh, VS Code instance workspace that I'm working with, right? Um, all I have is a single file main.js, which is completely blank and a git ignore file because I have it initialized to ignore node modules. So I'm gonna open up my terminal and the first command I'm gonna run is npm install at notion hq slash client. Well, this is installing, I'm actually gonna make things a little bit bigger so we can see better. Okay, so that seems to be installed. I'm gonna clear the screen out for the next time we need to open up this terminal. And now we can actually start writing our code here. Uh, let's actually also minimize that. So uh, we're first going to import the Notion client. So const, uh, let's see, we're gonna extrapolate client, capital C, very important, equals require Notion HQ client, okay? So we're creating an instance of the client, and now we need to um, create initialize that client. So we'll do const Notion equals uh, new client, And let's see, let's set our access key. I'm gonna grab, I have my uh, my access key put off to the side here, so we're gonna grab that. So auth is the parameter you wanna set that to, and it's just a string. So if you followed on from yesterday, you don't need to put bear in here. It takes care of all that underneath the scenes. So we'll paste in our uh, secret there, and that's the first step basically, is to initialize a Notion client. Uh, then I'm gonna create what's called an iffy, or a immediately executing function, something like that, uh, basically, since we have to async this, uh, I need a way to run async code directly in the root of node, and it doesn't support that by default, so we just need to do this little hack here. Uh, it's not really a hack, actually. <laughs> async, and then let's go ahead and put our other set of friends down there, and then we can write all of our asynchronous code inside of here. Okay, so uh, we're going to initialize a constant of response because we're going to be getting a response from Notion, and we'll say Notion dot uh, databases dot query which is if you follow again if you follow along from yesterday uh query is the uh, http call that we made so that they've they've modeled their uh, sdk very closely to their api which is really nice it helps for trying to um, work with if you're familiar with working with the api directly uh, we're then going to pass in database id and then again i also have my database id set off to the side here so i'm going to go ahead and grab that uh, if you need to get your database ID, again, watch the video I just released. It shows you how to get that. Uh, so my specific database ID is this guy right here, just a long uh, string of uh, numbers and characters. Uh, so and then I'm going to console.log and we're gonna log the response. And this is really the first step into reading data from a Notion database using JavaScript. So let's open up a terminal. I'm using control and then the back tick in the upper left-hand corner of my keyboard. And I'm going to type in node main.js and hit enter. Oh, we forgot to await it. Totally my mistake. Let me get back there. And let's await our Notion databases query and try running that one more time. Okay, so we're getting a list of results here. Uh, as you can see, there's URLs that link directly to the database. And just I'm going to bring up that database so we can see what this looks like too. So we've got record one, my first page, and hello world. You can see the URLs kind of uh, line up with exactly what we're seeing there. Um, there's a lot of properties that are embedded kind of inside of there, which is where most of that data is going to be. Um, but this is more or less just proves that we are actually getting data back from our Notion database. Uh, so the next example I want to uh, show is how you can filter some of that data. Now, the the method in which Notion, uh, Notion, if you've ever worked with it uh, in any depth, you know you can create some pretty advanced filters within the different views for your databases, um, and they've kind of set up their SDK to match some of that same functionality. So uh, we're going to pass in filter here. Filter is going to be an object, and we're first going to state the property that we're going to filter on. And I'm actually going to filter on the name property because uh, we're going to search for uh, if uh, a name contains uh, or if the name of a specific entry in a database contains some text. Uh, that is a text field, so that's the first thing we need to specify. And then the specific operator we're going to use within this text query is contains. And let's see, let's just go with world, right? I think that's what one of my records here. Hello world, lowercase w. Okay, so we're, we should here, we should be filtering on uh, any records that contain 
the text word inside of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my code, open my terminal back on. Let's clear this out to get some more space to work with. Uh, and then we're gonna run that same command, node main.js. And you can see we only get the one record back, which is that, uh, so you can see in the URL, it's hello world. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, just to demonstrate this working again, let's create another hello world in here. Let's say uh, uh, world two, I don't know, why not? <laughs> and I'm gonna go back into my code and run this one more time. And you can see now we have those two records coming back. Uh, and then the last example I really kind of want to show is how you can filter on a different uh, a different property instead of just the name property. So we're going to go back into my Notion table that I have up here. And I'm going to create a checkbox column called my checkbox. And we'll change this to checkbox. And let's check uh, my first page. We'll see if we can get that one to come back. So then back inside of our code, let's change the property name to my checkbox. And let's change uh, this. We actually have to get rid of lines 12 through 14 because we're no longer filtering on a text property. We're instead going to filter on a checkbox property, okay? And the operators within each one of these is a little bit different. I'll show you how you can kind of uh, discern how to work with this in, in a few moments here. So we're going to use the equals operator, and this is only accepts true or false. So we will say true because we want to find all the records inside of our database that have that checkbox checked. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, open terminal again clear out and run known node main.js and you can see we just have the one page that comes back my first checkbox because the properties were uh the property for my checkbox was set to true so the last thing i want to show is exactly how you can find out how to filter on some of these properties um i'm in kind of the under in, in developers.notion.com is the url you want to go to to access this and then i'm in the api reference uh, uh area so if we go to query a database and then under body params, you can see there's this filter object here and a filter conditions link you can click on. Let's go ahead and click on that. I'll make this text just a little bit bigger, although it doesn't help with all this extra space on the right here. And you can see this is an example of the different uh, filter filters that you can pass through. So you can see this is the same thing that we were looking at with just the single text. You can also use a compound filter so you can pass in, you could use like ands and ors and then pass in arrays of filters uh, down below. And then you can see the checkbox is an equals, number has a greater than. And then this is kind of where you want to start if you want to figure out all the different ways you can query different data within Notion. Because Notion can contain a lot of different interesting data, so there's, they, they have to accommodate or they have to consider how you would query on all that kind of data. So I'll go ahead and drop a, a link to this in the description below. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. Thanks again for stopping by. If you like this kind of content, whether it's developer related, Notion related productivity tools or integrations, automations generally, uh, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. If you like this video specifically, like it, share it out with your friends and uh, I will see you soon. Thanks, bye-bye.